James and Alan get an update from Dr. Sandra Lean on the Luke Mitchell case. Anyway, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Uh, we're here again, as you heard, with Dr. Sandra Lean. Uh, I shall get her on the camera now. Um, just wanted to catch up because so much is happening all the time with this case. Um, and there's been a lot of changes for the last time that we um, recorded with Sandra. So I figured it would be good. And I've played uh, pestered Sandra for maybe a couple of months to say, right, when are we sitting down again? When are we sitting down again? And uh, so here thankfully... Aye, straight out of a demo, here we are, exactly. Uh, I'm sat here, as you heard, with Alan uh, and myself, as ever. Alan being the eye candy, but let's get into this. The first thing I want to do is I want to, I want to play Sandra something that she's got in front of her. Um, and there's a bit of audio that you guys will get to hear, so you need to maybe jump onto Spotify to hear this. Oh, they'll hear it. They can look at us. They'll, they'll hear it from us. It's going down. down. Exactly. Right, Sandra. If you hit play on that, that will go through your headphones, so don't worry. Okay. Say what you see, say what you see. <laughs> Sounds like tourists. Right. Fisherman's close or something. This is, a, this is a wee message to say you've done absolutely amazing and we all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you speaking up and about the truth uh, and keep going and thank you for everything. It's me, Danny. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, thanks so much, Sandra. None of us would be here if it wasn't for you. The hard work over the last 20 years, like you've kept shouting and shouting and finally people are listening and we're with you all the way, 100%. So well done, Sandra, and thank you so much for getting us all here. Sandra, I'd just like to say you've been amazing and keep up the good work. I worked as a jury summoning officer down in England for uh, five years and we were summoning jurors for cases where families had waited up to sometimes three years to find out what had happened to their loved ones. We needed to make sure that the jurors were right for the case there was no conflict of interest. This had to be quite carefully managed, um, and in, certainly in cases of prison suicides, we would have a long list of associations we wanted to make sure they did not have to the families or those involved in the, in the case. Not only did I put those questions to the jurors prior, but they would then be heard again in court. The idea that in this case, in the case of Jody Jones, that this was, they failed even to do this in the case of this magnitude, it absolutely astounds me. And also, working at at a coroner's office, that the body was released when it was, is incredible to me, knowing what goes into a a court where you're establishing how, when and why somebody died. It, 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 yes, it beggars belief. So you said something about the triage question. Yes. Yes. So I would ask them, do you know anyone who works for the prison service? And management, even within that, in the case of a prison suicide, you know, it would also be the health body that treated them. It would be the prison service, and you know, often these are outsourced. So it would be a, some, you know, you wouldn't say HMRC prisons. It would also be, you know, the private companies involved with that. There was there was quite a list, and sometimes you would have to give a name. Do you know this person? They'd be concerned because that would allow a juror to perhaps go away and find out. Who is this? What's this case about? I can find out what it is I've been summoned for. Now, we really didn't want to do that unless it was necessary. And we would leave it right up until the end to do that. It was a very, very big decision for a coroner's officer to make. You know, what do we ask the jury? (laughs) It was taken very seriously. And of course it was taken seriously because, as I say, loved ones have been waiting years to find out what happened to their loved one. They need closure, and if you fail in that, you fail justice, and you've also failed that family and the person who has passed away, and it's despicable. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hiya, Sandra. Just to say, you are absolutely amazing. A pure angel for Luke. Well done, and keep up the good work, and we're all behind you. Sandra. Keep going. You're incredible. I can't believe you've got us 20 years down the line. Um, Keep going. You're amazing. Thank you. 
Sandra, keep on going. We're almost there. Hi Sandra, you're doing a fantastic job. I love you to bits and I'm proud to call you a friend. Love you. Thanks Sandra, thanks for everything you've done since 2003. I've been a big part of this as well and I appreciate everything you've done for myself and keep my knowledge and power and going and look, look at everything that we've got. We've got an army now, so thanks very much for everything. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Sandra, I just want to say thank you so much for all the work you do. You've done it for the last 20 years and I think you're the bravest woman in Scotland. Go Sandra! Is it replaying now? Just hit post. Sandra. In fact, I'll turn it off here. Here we go. That was very nice. Aye, I'll take the camera off Sandra and let her dry her eye. <laughs> I, look, Sandra, I, for you as the, the the justice warrior that you are, for Luke, I felt it was important to grab a few people's opinions on the day. And, you know, for the, for every person that spoke, there was two that wouldn't, um, even though I promised them, you know, they wouldn't be shown on camera, just by their voice, just the audio. And that's weird. Um, so I want to get into this by, uh, by saying, I have asked and reached out to various people from the community here and no one wants to talk. I had one woman that wanted to talk to me but she wouldn't let me share her audio and I'm kind of like, well, in a podcast that's kind of important, you know, I need you to be a live person and not just me spouting off answers. So, I mean, that went right up to the wire to the minute I said, look, I'll be recording audio. Nah. Now that person also says, well, look, I've got a load of stuff I could tell you, and I just sh I shut it down myself at that point, because what's the point if I can't bring it to the table for you to hear and Alan to hear and for everybody to hear? But she went to school with Joseph, and she had a lot of things that she wanted to talk about. But again, shut it down, no interest at the point where she wouldn't share it. And I find that really bizarre in itself, that there's so much time passed, and she, this girl had said to me that the consensus of opinion in this area is that it wasn't Luke. She totally feels it wasn't Luke. Everybody she knows feels it wasn't Luke. But nobody wants to talk. And that in itself, is that no just the bizarrest thing ever? That has been probably one of the most frustrating aspects of this case. Yeah. Right for day one. Somebody will contact me or somebody will tell me that they've got somebody that wants to speak to me. And I go, yes because it's somebody close to the community or close to the events at the time and they'll tell me all this stuff and then they'll say, but I can't, I don't even want you to share it with anybody. I'd, I'd rather they didn't tell me Aye. in a lot of cases. Having said that, that has worked out in some cases because I keep everything. Yeah. You know, Even if they didn't want me to go public with I keep everything. And then maybe years down the line, Somebody else will approach me that does want to go on record and they'll tell me Same something thing. very similar. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right, like well, yeah. it's, I can't corroborate it as such yeah. because that person doesn't want to be identified, doesn't want to be on record. Yeah. But in my head, I can now say, well, there you are. There's two people completely independent of each other because mm -hmm. that other person couldn't have known the first person has even spoken to me. Yeah. And here we have two people telling us the same story. So an example of that is, um, I, I'm going to be a wee bit careful about what I say here, but Definitely. one of the moped boys, um, I said in my last live, well, neither of them were where they said they were, when they said they were, back in 2003-04. And we had a witness come forward and give us a particular information about that. Corinne and I had actually been given that information back in 2009. Wow. But we couldn't... Can you so, so somebody told us that somebody had told them that, aye. if you know what I mean. Aye, aye, aye. And we couldn't get to the original person. And after the documentary, it was the original person that got right. in touch and is willing to go on record, has given us a statement. We have mm -hmm. that statement recorded. Um, but I knew the minute she started speaking... Because I'd heard that story all these years ago. Yeah. So things like that, sometimes if they're if they're not willing to go public, it's patience. I have uh, never, I don't think I've learned anything more than patience in the last 20 years because I was never a patient person. It's, it's part of what I wanted to bring today 
was because I noticed that I've watched Hunter's podcasts mm -hmm. with yourself, uh, and what I'm seeing a lack of is other people. And that's why I wanted to get these guys. I wanted to see if there was people interested in speaking. Yeah. And, you know, it was well wishes you got, thanks to those that uh, decided to take part in that. But it just, I felt, well, I've never seen anybody else backing you up. I've never seen anybody else in your corner, you know, on these videos and on these podcasts and everything. Like that. We all know they're there. Obviously, we're there. And that's why I wanted to do that today. And I just, sorry, I've jumped in with that. It's, yeah. another, it's another really serious issue. Um, some, People need to come forward. They need to speak. Yeah, but know. some of the some of the supporters, especially like the central campaign team, mm -hmm. and that's something just so that I can clarify here. I'm not the campaign team. Right. They yeah. tell me what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like guy Friday but night. You're the face of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we had the we had the protest on um, Saturday, and I told you yeah. like I'd had a plumbing disaster on the Friday, mm -hmm. so I was so tied up with that on the Friday night. I got to about ten o'clock at night, and I thought. I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I hadn't a clue. So of course, panic messages, and there are just it's all right. Well, somebody's coming it's to pick you up because that's the other thing for for the protests in particular out in public places. There are a core team. They'll come and get me. They'll take me right to the event. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody in within it's, eyesight. Yeah. Always, usually somebody within reach. Yeah. Because I could not do it without them. I couldn't. I can do this because mm -hmm. I'm safe yeah. in an enclosed place with people. Once you're out there in the public domain, without those guys, I, there's no way I could do it. Mm. Um, sorry, that was a, a bit of sidetrack. What I was oh, going to say oh, No, no, it's, it's, it's really relevant. The, the, the core team, the sort of close people, even they have been so targeted by this that it's actually, it could be harmful for them mm -hmm. to be seen yeah. on camera supporting this. Mm -hmm. I know at least one who almost lost her job. Bizarre. I know I two. I might be saying that before. Yeah, I know two who work within a large organisation is all I can say. And they would be like looked on really poorly if they were identified because of the work with the public. Mm. I mean, how how can you be, if you work with the public, how can you be seen to be doing harm by standing up for the truth? Mm. But they are, and, and their jobs would be in danger. So I totally understand why they won't go on camera. Uh -huh. Totally get it. Well, you, you had the, I mean, you, we had spoke about potential flack and stuff like that, and then people's comments and stuff like that. And there's been a few on the, oh, the, odd the, one or two. And the odd one or two and there was several I mean somebody commented on the state yeah, of Alan's appearance since I was on drugs Aye. Uh, I'd just like to clarify no, no, that crack on. <laughs> for that individual if they watch this one see when I'm I'm mesmerised because I see the failings again the individual yep and it's the same thing with you with the you know the people that didn't want to say they didn't want to do this that and everything else that you can lose the actual case itself but the injustice and failing of a system that yes. is in place to support everyone. Because when you say that it could be somebody else's daughter, somebody else's son, da da da, the ramifications is everywhere. It's the system that's failed. Yeah. The individuality, you wouldn't have to have an opinion. But see, when I'm caught almost in the headlights, they listen to somebody that has put so much effort into something, my head becomes absolutely pickled. It would have probably taken me, I would say, days to digest what you had said on that day. So, no, I'm not going to apologise for looking stoned. I'm absolutely mesmerised by it, thinking, how can this still be 20 years after? Yeah. Why is it still being a question? And it does, it just makes me dumbstruck. I'm no easy to um, shut up, but that at that time, yes, for some clown to think that I was on drugs, like, no, I'm just captured in this. I'm captivated by how... Something that I've rebelled against my entire life. I hate the system, and it's not me making it up. It's what the system showed me. So it's a reaction to that system, and I see it blatantly. I think, wow, yeah, that just, it's that smack in the face. So no, I don't take drugs. <laughs> yeah, <No>. and, <laughs> and I think when it, when it comes down to when all they've got is to um, insult the appearance of the people speaking. They've got nothing. Oh, I mean, nice. I've had, she can't afford a hairdresser, she can't uh. afford a dentist. Um, 
oh, she's aged, she's aged 20 years in two weeks. Yeah. Do I care? You know, here yeah. for what is I look that, like. Uh, what a lot of people don't realise is that we do this for nothing. I'm not getting yes. paid. Alan's yeah. not getting paid. You're not getting paid. We're sat in your room the now where you do your podcast. None what, of us are getting thing, paid for The one this. thing that comes out, yeah. even just that statement, is truth. And that's yeah. what you're fighting for. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's just truth, a bit of justice. And let's know, let's know hide things under carpets anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If the system is failing in its duty to represent, it's going to fail in its duty to represent everyone else. The story you told earlier, it failed that person because you didn't lodge it in a special time. I love to swear when it comes to that because you let away, you go do things to yourself mm-hmm. because you're set up as a system to protect us. This whole rubbishy, you no, know, they seem to have created this whole place and you know that language, the black slot, everything that they have at their disposal. We're not allowed nothing. We no. just we just did do as we're told. Absolutely. So you shut up. Just didn't bother about that. Just put it to rest because we we you know the big boys in charge have come to a conclusion, and that's it. So you'll just swallow that now, fuck off, back down the road. It's really Sorry. interesting. The, the guy we were talking about earlier that's that's doing uh, the um, social podcast, sessions uh, podcasts, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, don't, I think I can say his name in relation to the podcasts. Podcasts. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's social sessions six. Mm-hmm. I'll just say his name, Sean, just in right. case I, I'm not allowed to oh, name yeah. him fully. But he had a guest on um, who was a law student, but He's now working on aftercare mm-hmm. um, for the guys that come out and, and they've, they've got nothing. And he said, like, as law students, mm-hmm. they're reading about all these rights and all mm-hmm. these processes and all these things that are built into the system and that's how it works. And then you come out and you go in to practice and, yeah, they're all there on paper, yeah. but there's not a damn you thing that you can do with them because the system's... And this is what I talked about in my thesis, the secret language. Right, they're yeah. using the same words and phrases, Fantastic. but been... they mean something completely different to them to what they mean to us. So, so, and I think I said this before, uh-huh. evidence, what's evidence? Well, uh, th- there was blood at the scene. or the, No, it, evidence is information. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And for them, it's information that supports their story. And people kind of get their heads around that. They're like, but... But there was that evidence there. Take the condom. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. in Luke's case, there was that evidence there. Why did they do nothing with it? Because it didn't fit their story. Mm. And now it's changed even more. So what they do now is, if there's information that we would think is evidence, as ordinary people, that doesn't fit the narrative, just don't collect it at all. Just leave it. See, why do they have a narrative? Why do they have to put their own narrative to these things? Why don't they let the case build its own picture? Money. Money. And ego. There you go. eh? (laughs) Money and ego. So so you've got, and I I believe it's just been re-emphasised again, this um, league table mentality Mm -hmm. where you've got to get this many convictions within that and they're all pitting against it. Well, not in Scotland because we've only got one police force in Scotland. True. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. but what Targets. you have is this this race to conviction mm-hmm. for the least possible money because that's efficiency. We got the conviction and it cost us half a million less than it could have done if we'd done it this way. All right, but what was this way? Or the right way? Mm. Oh, that's why you didn't bother doing it. Pie Literally. Charts. Pie charts yeah. and graphs that yeah. sells the commodity, what the commodity is, yeah. this is that, and we've got a job to do, da da da. So they're, they're yeah. efficient doing their job. Mm-hmm. And it's going back saying, look at this, look, we solved that many yeah. crimes. Did you really solve them or did you just put a name against them and that's it? Well, it because, is like, like they're they saying, that law, that law of language. Mm-hmm. But we're baffled to it. We get told, that, no, the best is we get is, are you that person? Yes, I am, right, sit in your ass. Like, well, yeah. Hang on a minute, where's my voice? You went through it in mm-hmm. a, a kind of different circumstance, yeah. but the system is the system. And it's no design to hear your voice. When you were talking about the fathers for justice, yeah. climbing up in a building, what's the purpose? So we can be heard. Oh, they'll listen, uh. but they'll still find you for it because <laughs> mm-hmm. they're not really actually listening because it's already set up, it's in place. Yeah. The only way you're going to help it is by this, is by talking amongst yourself. Yeah. It's the only thing that's going to work it. So if we say, no, it's a lot of shite, they'll be like, you can't say that. I can say that because mm-hmm. I'm not saying it to anyone other than myself. If anybody wants to listen to that, yeah, if we see a failing, 
It is a failing. It doesn't matter whether you tell me it's right or wrong. It is a failing. You never followed up on this. You never done that. And I think reading that was enough for me to spot far too many. And I'm no Sherlock fucking Holmes. Yeah. But uh. I can see where the inconsistency is and how you manage to get that out of that. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It circles into squares. It doesn't fit. So why are you trying to push it in? That's, well, the analogy I used before is the difference between a jigsaw puzzle and Lego blocks. So the members of the public think they're picking up, and, oh, I found a jigsaw bit. Yeah. That fits there. Right, find another bit. that, And a picture emerges. Oh, That's what the public thinks happen. Uh. What they're doing is they're picking up things, chucking them, just like Lego blocks. Uh. Make it fit. Throw them all in, and then they go, right, what model do we want to build? Mm -hmm. So they start building their model. Oh, boss, there's eight blocks left in the box. Oh, Chuck it in the cupboard. We've got a model. They need them. That is They've how it works. It. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's to me, all the, all the pieces that's in that book, and because of the way that you worded it absolutely perfectly and you didn't offend anyone, you didn't kick anybody's ass or step on their toes, but there's enough jigsaw pieces for there for me to create a picture. And like I say, I'm just an average guy, but I have seen that system, I've been involved in that system, and I know how corrupt it can be. Yeah. To see it in that, that's just the validation that yes, it is. But I could see a picture in there that that case never <laughs> showed me any of that picture. Mm -hmm. No danger, there was none of it there. And you think, wow, but yep. it, it's, it, I mean, we were talking earlier about like members of the public that, that I said, <laughs> you get them everywhere. We can do this better, we can do this faster, we can do this, uh, you know, more effectively. On you go, have a, have a try. And they go, they Google things and they go, right, that's how it works. That's it. Da -da. No. No. Go on then. <laughs> yeah, come back in 19 years yeah. and tell me you're still at the same place. Yeah, tell me you're still Googling. Yeah. Um, but hmm. but the, the, the kind of point to that is that I learned very early on to read between the lines. It's not so much what's said as what's not said. Exactly. And that's when, like you're saying, didn't he kick arses and didn't he, didn't he name call and everything? It's not necessary. Didn't have Once to. you lead, read between the lines and say to people, well, they say, and I said that on yeah. Sunday about, oh, they've moved the, they've moved the samples. Have they moved the samples? Oh, we didn't move the samples to that lab. <laughs> but did you move the samples? You haven't answered the question. Yeah, exactly. So it's that. It's, it's read between the lines, and then, and my thing has always been to teach ordinary people, to give ordinary people the meat, because I'm, I'm ordinary people. I knew nothing right. about this when I started. To, to teach ordinary people how to do that, how to look at what it says in black and white and figure out that is not what it means. That's never what it meant. And that's been in front of us for decades. Yeah. And we all took well, it at face value and it's not what it means and that's at all. what distraction is it distracts you for mm -hmm. actually doing that thing it's being led you know up the garden path i yep. mean by the time you get to the gate you know i've been up here before this is rubbish yeah and you turn back then you start looking at you turn things for yourself think, hang on a minute you're saying that but if i was to turn it and look at it that way mm -hmm. i'm building a bigger pitch in myself and i think that's certainly for this one individual thing it's allowing people to see that. And all the wee comments for the people saying, keep going, keep going. Because mm. everybody wants it. It's only the narcissistical fucking retards that didn't want this to be a truth. And if the truth is only that the system failed, that's good enough. Yeah. Because the system should be addressing itself mm -hmm. for their failings. And, and that goes to the, when people ask me, you know, what if the tests were to come back and it was Luke? After all this, so be it. The system still the system failed. failed. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. We didn't get the truth uh -huh. because the story, even if even if the, the samples came back and it was Luke, the story they fed us sure. could not possibly have been the truth. Uh -huh. So, and and for the people that keep saying, just recently, oh, she's talking about you know if the samples come back and it's no him, she's backtracking, she's starting to think it's him. I've been saying this since 2007. Aye. First time yeah. I was yeah. asked it. Justice <laughs> is that, the, that there was no justice because yeah. justice would have ironed out every part of this to give us 100%. This is the story, this is how it happened, and this is how we caught them. Because that's what we need. They represent us. Mm -hmm. We pay their wages. The taxpayer pays these clowns to do a job. Yeah. They clearly never done the job. So it's, irre it's irrelevant, the case. Again, that's my biggest thing. 
is I wouldn't defend this young man. I think it was horrible what happened to him. And if it wasn't him, gee whiz, they've got a lot to answer for. Yeah. For everybody included. The, the, the whole society outside these walls, they've got a lot to uh, look forward to in the sense that, oh, there's a big lumpy humble pie. You better start you know, polishing up the mm. cutlery because you're going to have to eat that. The system, the way that it failed and didn't it do its job, that's the biggest thing with this whole thing for the 20 years that you've invested yeah. in it. I've never invested that much in it, but again, like I said the first time, I look at that young lad and I think, I can't, I can't put him there. I can't yeah. see him doing that. And neither can the evidence. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's, it. that's it. The, the stamp on it. Yeah. So, so there, there's a thing you've just hit on both of you. And I love how this comes naturally. It just happens. It, can it leads me to this question that I had for today, right? All that evidence that you have, Sandra, right? Everything that we've all heard for podcast after podcast after story after book after everything. Right, put us in a situation where that trial gets put in a trial situation today. Does he get convicted? No. Exactly. So how <laughs> the fuck is he still in jail? No. Do you know, this is, you know, if you get, um, and in no way am I pointing the finger at that jury at all, but if that jury was to sit down and they look at the evidence that they now must know, yeah. surely they must be like, holy shit, we've made a mistake. Mm, but right? We never got to hear that. We never got to hear this. We never got to hear that. They, And I'm not pointing the finger at them. They did what they... No, what, they were hoodwinked. They, yeah. But that's it's a distraction. And like Sandra saying, we're all uh, human. So yeah. if, you're, if you're leading me down the garden path, telling me everything's great down there, uh, I'm going to walk down that down. path. Uh, you're uh, only showing me what you're showing me. You're no getting somebody that's coming in and actually questioning it, saying, but hang on a minute. No, there is no movie script for it because you know yourself if you had the proper people mm -hmm. representing they would be shouting and fighting because i know myself it's just that weird thing when you're reading it and you think no hang on a minute. it probably took me three times as long to read that because every chapter like hang on a minute what would i do there because yeah. i'd be screaming kicking shouting saying whoa no 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 that's fucking rubbish and i think that's the worst there is that because we're just we're normal human beings mm -hmm. but when these big boys and their fancy gowns and their intimidation and then they're like da 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 it's, it is again the, the rabbit in headlights no. and you think right ah oh, yeah well I think that and I think that well, that's clearly right and that's clearly wrong but when, when you start uncovering all the wee bits it's like when we were coming up I was on the phone to him because we're in two separate cars and I'm still talking about it. I'm showing him areas yeah, you know, yeah. Um, that matter and I'm saying even at the, the school where you've got people that have been there, the whole process of taking a witness is to eliminate them from it. So if you've embraced somebody, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, an assault, you've embraced them, you've nothing to do with it, but you've, you've come there to comfort them. They've got to remove you because any traces of your fibres puts you potentially in that, oh, that's that's the witness that's yep. there. You have to, none of it, and see that in itself, like, whoa, just stop there. You, no, you didn't you need to take me any further because you failed there. Yeah. 100%. You've no removed people. And all that. Yeah, it was too much. Far too yeah. much. Yeah. I, I was talking to a lady um, a couple of days ago who is still fighting to overturn her conviction 30 years down the line. Oh, wow. This is a really difficult one. But we were talking about the instructions to the jury and the, the way the system insists that the jury will do as de excuse me <coughs> the jury will do as they're instructed and we're human beings so sorry no running um if you look at any of these cases the prosecution sets out a backdrop right and the story is that the first story that the the um, jury gets is here's what happened and we're going to prove it, right? Sorry to put the image. In How there. then does the jury extract the important bits mm -hmm. from the backdrop? How do they know the difference? How do they know which are the bits that are the theory and which are the bits that the evidence? And the idea that oh, the defence can come along and, and argue this and. It, it's too late. That picture is but built from the minute the case starts. And then to tell, uh, I said this the last time as well, to, to tell people to put things out of their mind. Not yeah, that's chance. not humanly uh, possible. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're Just picking... Just think about it. <laughs> I, but they pick the people off the round about Edinburgh and all yes, around about the surrounding... So I, I, I heard that feelings. one. Aye. Yeah. Instead of getting 
half a dozen folk for doing south that maybe didn't know the local locality. And <laughs> it was all locals, here. more <laughs> or less locals, wasn't Why it? Why do yeah. you think they didn't bring them up for, for example, down south or Aberdeen or Aye. Ireland? Why do you think? I don't know. I, 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 I couldn't even. I couldn't even begin to think why they wouldn't do that. I hate to do it. Money. Money. They'd have had to put them up in hotels. They'd have had to pay all their expenses. Aye. They'd have had to transport them back and forward every day. Whereas our poor Aye. sods that live locally had to get the bus. That's get right. The bus get in. the bus and claim your and expenses. And then you're no longer read the paper, or you uh-huh. can't hear the person in front of you on the bus. You've got to have your, your earphones on. So yeah. And, and you can't go. By and, uh, those that go for a pint or up, you know, have a wine or whatever, and then everybody in the pub's talking about it. And can uh, you pass a newsstand? Hell uh, no. Uh, they've they've uh, got to uh, close uh, all the newsstands like on the way to the courts so that yeah. you didn't see. What, Ridiculous. It's wrong, so isn't it? Much. It's wrong, like. And you can't go home and talk to your partner or your spouse about what you heard or what you see. No, no, none of that. It's well, sh- isn't that interesting <laughs> that that Lord Nimmo Smith and his infinite wisdom pointed out to the jury that in when they were going off to deliberate in these circumstances, in the past we would put people in hotels to keep them away from everybody else, but we're not. <clears throat> We're not going to do that in this case because we don't see any danger, any risk no. of anybody trying to talk to the jury, right? So at that point, the jury had come back and said, we're nowhere near a verdict. They'd only been out maybe two and a half, three hours. Nowhere near a verdict. And that's when he said, well, you know, in the past, this is what we do. But you're good people and we oh, don't right. see any risk in the biggest <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. case in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Sent them home. They come back in the morning. They're not even in the jury room an hour, yeah. and they've got a verdict. Mm-hmm. What happened overnight? They spoke to nobody. They watched no, nothing, they and I'm themselves. pretty sure they didn't ah. Google anything at them, all. Each one of them come in, like, yeah, what did you think? I think, oh, yeah, and you, uh, aye, 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 yeah. Miraculous. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. miraculous. Overnight, so are we, sta- are we staying for lunch, or are we off? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? sausage rolls aye. Interestingly, that's, so, a, that's another one. Is they always try and get they try try and go for a verdict for a Friday for a Friday because yeah. they hang the the if you didn't reach a verdict by Friday, uh-huh. we might have to put you up in a hotel yeah, and you can't see anybody. More cost. So brings me to my next question. Then cost. So Lord and Lady and is right honourable whoever is it this system, the fact that these individuals who are the professionals who are our lords and whatever, are they then dictated on what they can do and cannot do financially? Them themselves? Or are they above that problem? You know, is it that they're acting in a certain way because they know there's a there's a wee meter running and when that meter gets to the bottom, I'm not getting a glass of wine tonight or I'm not getting new slippers at the weekend or whatever. Again, he'll say to himself, I'm not going there, but... So are they governed... Financially, That's a really interesting question because there's two parts to it. Mm-hmm. The first is that the defence has a, a limited fund. Yeah. Right, you mm-hmm. can have this mm-hmm. much for uh, checking the, for the forensics that they didn't check. You can have this much for interviewing the witnesses. You can have this much and it's all tallied up and that's their pot. The prosecution has no such restriction. Right, so they get whatever they want, whatever they need. So there's your first imbalance. Uh, but is the QC's salary, are the lawyers' salaries, mm-hmm. or rather the, the, the junior counsel salaries, included in that pot? No. They're going to get paid at the end of the day. Right. Y- your lawyers' firms, they are like on the hour. Yeah. That be legal aid or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. But once you get up to the QCs and the junior councils, they're getting paid regardless of the result. So what do they care? And I've mm-hmm. heard, I have heard QC saying that. doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter to me. Right. So that's, that's where they say justice is blind. It is blind because it can't see the tips in favour of the prosecution yes. all the time because they have unlimited budgets. Well, you, you look at this case <laughs> when, when they went for um, funding for the cell site analysis. And again, mm. this was a bit loaded because initially we found out that they'd been told the expert they'd gone for was too expensive and mm. they'd have to find a cheap. Can you imagine shopping for a cheaper cell site analyst? Oh, like, oh, I know loads of them <laughs> like, up the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that, was, that was the first thing. And then it was ages later. That, that's the thing about this process as well. 
you're learning stuff the whole time that you're not aware that you're learning until something else comes up and you go, hang on. If the defence applied for funding for cell site analysis, mm -hmm. it had to be for a second opinion. They had to have been wanting their own expert to refute something that the Crown's expert had said. Well, that'll be the Crown's expert we were told didn't exist because we were told there was no cell site analysis done. Uh-oh. There's another <laughs> one hidden two uh, layers deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was only looking at we didn't get the funding that later down the line you go, wait a minute, they couldn't even apply for the funding unless it was to refute something that they told us didn't exist. That's and now that they've destroyed all the evidence, we'll never know. The 20 years, I mean... Uh, Hopefully in 20 years' time, there'll be people referring back to this whole thing to actually prove points and use it because uh, it's that same cliche that there was two people's lives got really ruined on that day. There has to be something that comes for it, no just exposing the system for its failings, but for the next person that comes along that it cannot be done. It has to be changed. Yep. It has to be. Yep. You know, when you hear them, they say, oh, we'll refer back to da-da-da, blah-blah-blah, no. Jones versus fucking Mitchell, yeah. and I, I hope that that's what comes for it because it has to be. Well, I heard a case yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Somebody sent me a link. I hadn't heard of this case before, and basically, it's a guy who died of a stab wound to the chest, but quite unusually, it went right through the breastbone and and killed him. Mm. And the police said it was suicide. Some force. Uh, well, there, there's a problem with that because when they found him, the knife wasn't in his body. It was at the other side of the room. So he had the strength, ostensibly, <laughs> to get this knife through mm -hmm. his breastbone, to pull it back out chuck it away. and yeah, to chuck it away. And, and that there was something like five pathologists um, had a bit of concern about this. Like, mm. But they stuck, to their, they stuck to their grounds. It was suicide. He'd done it himself. And then there was a new pathologist brought in and new pictures. And the argument now was that the stab wound didn't go through the breastbone. It went in the soft tissue between the ribs at the side of the breastbone. So he could have done it himself. Right. So the family are completely... Was there two, two wounds then? With it. Well, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. Eventually... <clears throat> They managed to get mm. this picture that had apparently come out of nowhere and they sent it off to a top pathologist. And he looked at it and he went, that's not your man. That's somebody else's body. Oops. Because there was a stab wound to the side. Yeah. But the one to the breastbone was missing and it's there in every other picture. <laughs> And his conclusion is horrifying. It's absolutely horrifying. He said either they were really lucky and somebody came in with a stab wound in that particular position and they were able to swap the photographs or they pulled about a body out of the morgue and as part of the autopsy put that in there to take that picture to try and support their seven or eight year oh. argument. I, I thought I'd heard everything. I thought I had heard everything. And when I saw that one, I was like, is there any hope? Is there any hope if they're willing to stoop to those levels? Mm. That is disgusting. It's when you yeah. look at that and then again, bring it back to that big old candy floss machine. Is that, uh, how much money did they save with the trials, with all these other mm -hmm. people and that, and that, and they'd be rubbing their hands because they probably got a bonus here. It's really yeah. sick to think that that could be the one but when it comes to you know Christmas time and oh look we've done really well blah 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 you can see it with the fines and things like that maybe we kick back here and there but to actually save money mm -hmm. does does each district get a wee it just it baffles you because I know that in the workplace if I've made savings but still come across with the product the savings should be you know I mean distributed amongst everybody that's in in the workforce still a workforce, they're still doing a job. And if they've made huge savings, that big pot that was there, did they then get, I don't know. 
well, shiny boots. It's it's a <laughs> shiny boots. <laughs> it's interesting that their argument year on year is oh. They've decreased our funding again. We saved all that money and they've taken it away from us. And we saved all that money and they've taken... No, they didn't. No, they didn't. If you look at the actual funding, it's still there. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's again it's blocked out differently, it. but it's still there. So so where is it going if they're making all these savings? Like you say, yeah, yeah new boots, a shiny new hat maybe. It, it's Christmas party's absolutely rocking <laughs> this year. Yeah. Hi. So Saturday, uh, the demo in Edinburgh. Awfully noisy with the bagpipes. There was a wedding behind you and everything. <laughs> couldn't believe Didn't it. Didn't they tell you though, but you couldn't even make that up. The wedding come out <laughs> literally as Sandra started. I think she was about a minute in and out comes the wedding. So we had another piper, but right behind her. So we had to wait on that anyway. Nice. Funny that that's going on, you know. We've got all these tourists. We've got a wedding. We've got a demo, you know. And it was great to see the amount of people. And you said it yourself. I never noticed the age group, but there was a lot of young people taking leaflets, asking questions. And that was phenomenal yeah. for that a lot of um tourists were intrigued they were like what's this all about and they were taking the leaflets so there's other people it's reaching out to other people further afield i thought the venue yeah. was fantastic as well <laughs> you know what i mean right smack in the heart of it Aye. well <laughs> we, we had a little we had a little plan for saturday but it didn't come off because my um portable power station ah. didn't arrive in time but what we were going to do was project look onto the court building oh, so when he was speaking we had him projected onto the court <laughs> building yeah. and the bloody thing arrived while I was at the protest so you need a late protest then <laughs> <laughs> you need one no at 12 o'clock maybe 4 or 5 uh, so you can yeah, get yeah. it up there right? but that, that was our plan so that people walking past yeah, because the, the last time we, there was a pop up in Edinburgh and the girls left um, posters on the wall, on the wall. of the court. Mm -hmm. So that's become a thing now. And right. Started with with um, one of our amazing supporters who stuck a sticker uh -huh. up on the court during one of our runabouts, putting out stickers and leaflets and everything. And STV News were doing a story outside the court that night. <laughs> and the camera pans up. <laughs> and there it's there. Sticker so it's, it's kind of become a thing as, as we always leave things yeah. on the court wall as well. As it is. Listen, there's plenty of people do it out there with businesses and guerrilla marketing and stuff like that. They'll put stuff all over the place. Yeah. And you kind of control what somebody does with a sticker that you've given Absolutely them. But to not, slap no. it right in the face of the system that's failing, yeah. That, oh, nice. Yes. That's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. did, did you see the girl on Saturday? So I remembered as we were setting up that I'd forgotten to ask the police or I'd forgotten to inform the police that we were going to be having a, a static gathering. And it's only it's only a courtesy, you don't have to do it. Yeah. But I tend to do it in advance just to make sure they didn't come mob handed. And I'd forgotten. And I was actually setting up and I turned to one of the supporters and I said, I forgot to phone the cops as you <laughs> No. So we're getting it all set up and I don't know, we were maybe about 20 minutes in before, before the speaking and everything. And this police officer, the, the van came down first. Yeah. And then this police officer, and he's got a, I don't know if it was a notebook or a, a clipboard, and he's wandering like nonchalantly across towards us. He's crossed the road, he's coming down ziggity, towards ziggity. the protest. I'm like, right, <laughs> here we go, here we go. And one of the supporters <laughs> intercepted him. And just giving him information leaflets and bookmarks and tell <laughs> him. I know, he's a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. And he just said, I know all about the case. She said, well, you Ooh. obviously don't know enough. <laughs> See, my thing with, with society, the way that it is and the way things are unfolding and truths are being outed and that, there must be whistleblowers that are actually taking the salary that are absolutely hating it because mm -hmm. it'd be burning them and their conscience and that wee, do you know what I mean, that wee moral compass that says, I know yeah. this is wrong. There is failings on our part. Why would they not just open their face and just... Da -da? I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. There's that many people within that system. And one of the ones is a, a guy who works for the social work. And he says to me that he was then a thing. He wasn't the case uh, representative of this individual. But the chap had asked for money. And he slates them for the inside dude. Mm -hmm. But probably never go on camera, so I'll never say yeah. his name. But he says that the young guy asked him for money. He says, look, I can't give you money in case you go and use drugs or anything mm -hmm. like that. That's going to weigh heavy on me. Should you overdose or something? Should happen? 
But if you're hungry, I will take you to the shop. And the guy turned to me and says to him, it's all right for you and your big fancy fucking office in the high street. And I'm like, hang on, the high street? That's an e one postcode. Mm-hmm. Where are you serving the community for the, the most popular destination probably in Scotland, in yeah. the capital? The fucking high street. I remember as being a young guy to go into the town. If I was in that town, I would either be up there stealing or I'm going to court. Yeah. There's no reason for me to be there. So to get somebody to go up there and you think, wow, this is all wrong. I want they guys to actually say, yeah, it was me. I did say that. Mm-hmm. Because it's wrong. They know it's wrong. So for the justice system, for the individuals that come out, the young lass in the red coat, we I never saw, but I know she's got a red coat. For her to say, no, no, this has to be done that way. This is how it's... Yeah. I want the more to come here. Imagine that. What a beautiful place it would be if they yeah. just says, no, no, no. Because you get somebody that's arguing and you've got the staunch face that's taking his salary and he bother. And, but no, no, you're wrong. And then the person that's actually standing on his wing turns and says, no, they're actually right. And you know they're fucking right mm-hmm. because it's been like this and just blew the whole thing up. I think that would be... I, I worked with a um, government organisation for about five years and some of the wrongdoing was... was Eye watering, yeah. like as as matter yeah. of course, because it's public money, they don't give a yeah. So and look at things that are built that nobody wanted. Look at things yeah. that are put in place that nobody wants. I'm still paying for it. <laughs> but one of the things that you find, I don't know so much now. I don't know if it's still the same now, but with the government organisations, is these are jobs for life for people. Mm. So all their pension. Or their future when they're finally going to actually start living their life at mm. the end of however yeah. many is all invested in that. And to say he lied or he screwed that up and cost 200 grand yeah. is to lose the thing that they've sacrificed, and it is a sacrifice but to work in a job like that. Yeah, but in it though, it's a bribe. Mm-hmm. No, it's a dangly but, carrot. Yeah. It's like you said, one against it. What's the chances of these guys coming out, Alan, and, and doing their bit and saying their bit, no matter what they think? What's the chances of them doing it with a big pension like Sandra's talking about? And you that's know, where mm-hmm. moral compasses come Aye. in, James. But what's the chances of them doing it if somebody that's just a campaigner's looking at losing their job just for saying, well, I believe that story? Yeah. You know, and it's back to the, the thing with communities. They didn't want the communities. They're bashing the communities. Why are we all talking? Because we're Joe Bloggs. Mm-hmm. All these guys are not talking because they're smashing the communities that we are part of. It's that old cliche, and it's by uh, the people, for the people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are the people, no citizen Smith, it's us. It's us and they aye. work for us. They, you know, they didn't work to tell us what to do, but the laws and everything govern us and tell us what to do. You're, hang on, yeah. we're the people you're supposed to be serving, you clown. Aye. And look how far those laws have encroached in the last oh, few years. Geez. I mean, yeah. it's getting to the stage where... We're lucky we can do this. If, You've got to eat well, well a straw to get yourself some fresh air. If you're, if mm. you're you know, a sneeze, they reckon you can't control. You know, if you get the urge to sneeze, yeah, yeah. you can't control. We're going to be asking for permission to sneeze yeah. in the not too distant future. Seriously. Well, that's it's why it's terrifying. I think that is an enough is enough. Mm-hmm. We've had enough. Everybody no, each one of us in the room has had enough. The people that will probably watch will have had enough. The morals of society has gone so far way off track. But there is people out there that are saying, No, like your your buddy, the injustice of him, but he'll do a podcast among men with mental health. We've been trying for ages the booklets, the cups, the t shirts, the yep. the podcast. Everything that I do is to try and get individuals to open up and be truthful with herself. If we're all doing it at ground level, because we again we didn't need to climb on buildings to have them listen to our voice. No, no, I'll just speak to you. And then word the mouth will spread and da 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 and we do it amongst the people. They're soon going to be looking and saying what are you doing? Like, we're not doing anything wrong. We're just talking. Yeah. That's all we're doing. You've removed the community centre. You've removed social hubs for the community. You mm-hmm. didn't want us talking. But unfortunately, we're going to play your own game. We're going to use your tools yeah. against you. Yeah. So sorry, you're never going to stop us. And all the people that's up there that are taking that salary, they're not going to be inclusive amongst that because they've alienated themselves. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to say, you know what, you can stick your pension up your poop shoot. I'm going with the boys. Yeah. I want to hang out with them because they're <laughs> yeah. telling the truth. And that's, it's one of the things with, with a lot of the supporters over the last couple of years as well. Initially, it was just, oh my God, this is terrible, what can we do? But what you're seeing now is people going about their day-to-day lives like they did before, mm-hmm. except now they're going out 
with leaflets and banners and they're stopping people or everybody that they speak to, they mention it and they're going, what? And they go, go here. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, um, the team came up with, I can never remember what, QR codes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, every, like... I've got that. I want to put that on the camera. A video and interview and set of facts, and they're all linked in there. And that people can just do that with their phone. I had a wee girl do it. But, a wee girl, she was 19. On, on uh, Saturday, I, I gave her a, a bookmark. I said, everyone in there, go have a look at it. See what you think about it. And, she's got, and, and all the list came up and she was like, Right. Holy moly. She, you can see she's like, what? So things like that. Yeah. Use their own technology. Here we go. So let's get this on the camera now. We don't need Jim's again. Here we go. So if you've got your mobile phone and you want to... Sc- oh, better move my hand. <laughs> Here we go. There's the QR codes. Can I make that any bigger? Scan it now. Get it in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze it. Pays the now that. Anyway, sorry, Sandra. But that's it. You know, using their Simple. own tools. The technology is there. They're, they're now trying to take that away from us as well, with all the cancel culture and everything else. But something like that, if it's on a bit of paper mm. and somebody's got their phone, yeah. can you take that it's away from us? No, none at all. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think the, the bigger thing is the amount of people that that have seen that, that have read that. Yeah. There's too much going on for their vision to be blinkered at all, mm-hmm. that they're actually sitting back a wee bit me and saying, hang on a minute. Yeah. They're not looking at the jigsaw piece. They're looking at the picture and the frame because the frame is a big one. What's beyond the frame? The broadening their vision that they can actually see. And again, to me personally, the more we can see in life, the more we're not going to be duped, deceived or led down a garden path. So hopefully any one of the people that has listened to that story, listened to you, watched a podcast, read any of the information... It gets selected for jury duty. I bet they've got a brand new pair of shoes on as they're sitting there. It's like, a very no, interesting discussion. <laughs> of course, we're not going to wear it anymore. I think no. the, the, the bigger community, as in the real people, know the ones that are thinking, oh, I better do my, my civil bollocks yeah. because my pension. And, but no, 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 just your average Joe yeah. isn't willing to be duped anymore. No chance, there's too much yet. Yeah. I think something that really interested me is the number of people who've come into the groups and said, I believed all the shit back then, and I feel so guilty now. I went with it, and my, my conscience... I'm like, great. And, and, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, yeah, great. Because yeah. if it's affected you to that depth of emotion, mm-hmm. it's shifted something in you. It's yeah. a big shift. Yeah. And I do say to people, you know, don't you... Don't be too hard on yourself because everybody was taken in by it. I call it I call it a perversion because mm-hmm. it's, it's that same thing. You're like, great, you feel bad that you swallowed all this bullshit. Mm-hmm. Now turn the table and look at who served you up that bullshit yeah. and now see through them because that's where it is. It's not looking at yourself. It's yeah. no self-reflection. It's bouncing it right out your own eyes and looking thing. Mm-hmm. Well, you wrote that story. Why did you put that there? You're the guys yeah. that come up with all this stuff. So, yeah, again, another beautiful thing that seems to be happening. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter that we stick her on the court, trigger somebody to look and say, what the fuck is that? It's enough to see that people are thinking, no, hang on a minute. No, yeah. no, 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 no. You're going to, you want me to believe that? You better deliver me what I need. No, if you're going to sell me a cake, let me see the ingredients. Yeah. Because I'm not going to swallow it otherwise. And see that in itself, fucking fantastic. I have to say, I mean, obviously, this work is exhausting. It, it just, it's, you know, he came in and I had all my stuff. Aye. I was gone through, like, legal documents and everything. It is exhausting. But there is nothing more encouraging, nothing more uplifting than seeing people saying mm-hmm. things like that. I believed that. And, oh, my God, and now I've seen, and now I'm looking at, and there's this as well. Yes. If, if there's Done nothing it. in the case itself... Moving forward, that's enough to keep it going. It's a moment yeah. in itself. Yeah. Well, you put out a thing recently on your latest podcast and the girls were talking about it uh, on Saturday and it's like, bring your why to the table. Yes. Right, well, here's my why, right? I remember I moved for Fife to Edinburgh, uh, late, mid-90s. Why? Uh, <laughs> for love. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, 
Uh, you definitely not wrong place. <laughs> aye, well, I was in Pennywell Place, so I was... Uh, Hotel Cali Fort. Aye, down. it was all right, actually. But anyway, my why is this. I remember the story. I remember no being long in Edinburgh at the time. Or, well, I was in Edinburgh a few years at this point. Already in the rougher areas of Edinburgh, thinking, oh, fuck, what's this city all about? And, everything, and I'm working away, doing my thing, trying to support family. And then I hear the story of this. I hear this happening. And then I'm like... What's this place all about? And I remember the story loud and clear. And I think, ah, nah, nah, can he be? And then the boy did it, sure enough. Oh, it must have been him then. But my why is now, since then, the documentary come out, bingo. I'm like, ah, I remember that. Fuck no, no touch. And then you see the documentary, you're like, all right, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going to look, because I like podcasts, I like this. And you dig deeper. So my why is, is I don't believe he's fucking guilty. I th- the miscarriage of justice. So my why is, oh, I've, I've got all these fancy cameras and podcasting gear. I'm going to help in any way I can. Yeah. So my why is, I don't believe personally, in my own opinion, that this lad could possibly be guilty. If he is, pff, criminal mastermind, not just Scottish criminal mastermind, worldwide criminal mastermind, mm-hmm. for him to achieve what happened to that lassie. If, at that age. At that age, yes. Superpowers. So that's my why. Is because I have these things, and I think more podcasters need to get onto this. I think your bigger guys need to do more of it. They need to give it more attention, because these are the, these are the guys that like all the digits and the likes and the, the subscribe here, and and they get funds from it. So why not support it? Use the funds to right or wrong. Yeah, is what I say. And then there's bigger guys than us out there. They need to get on this more regularly. They should be chasing you every couple of months, Sandra. And saying, Sandra, what, what's the latest update? Anyway, that's my why. Yeah. That's why I do this. It's why we're doing it for nothing. It's why you're fighting. You, you know, it, it's seeing the passion in you, the 20 years. Jesus Christ, you need, you deserve a medal, whatever form that comes in. It comes in the form of a wee bit landing some That's it. I was just trying to say, it's a wee bit landing. It's putting the feet up, knowing that you've done your best, done, you can put your aye. feet up. Which, that's my why. That's why, and... To go from my way is, I just wanted to go for there to say, how are you getting on? How's, and you've just mentioned your land, which I was hoping you would go on. Yeah. Go for it. Um, <laughs> I've, oh. ne- I've never before been able to say or even feel that the end might be in sight in mm. this case. I've never been able to say that, never been able to feel it. Did you notice her? I asked her how she was, and she's on about the case again. That's fine, though. <laughs> I've got <laughs> some <laughs> Crack on, crack on. Sorry, I'll just... Uh, I've got some yeah. um, But this is how selfish you are. I'm asking you, and it's the case, but anyway. But, well, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a bit of selfishness in it, because if I can see potentially an end, then there's going to be a big, big hole in my life. Mm. And there's going to be a beginning. That I, I need to have something in place for mm-hmm. and I have already said I've said before I will not do this work any longer and what I mean by that is I will not take on new cases start at the beginning go through all the case paper find all the stuff I, I don't have the headspace for no. it I was 39 uh-huh. when I started this mm. and I'm 60 next yeah. month so it's, uh, enough's enough I, uh-huh. I got the sort of when this is done when this one's done I get to go back to 39. Of course, I don't. Of course. Oh, I don't. But you will, though, in your mindset. But because everything you're doing with that garden is for the right reasons. It, the truth is that a lot of people suffer with mental health. COVID knocked it right in its ass, and yeah. people didn't get that whole thing. The sense of community is gone, community centres are gone, pubs and hubs and everything else have been getting restricted and shut yep. down. You're going to be able to have and find somewhere for people with their mental health, because you have been at the rock face that your mental health has been tested beyond any young guy putting that much time into something that he has quite happily never done it. Mm -hmm. Your mental health suffered, everyone else that's been involved with it, and then you've got all these people that are now saying, I fucking never swallowed all that pish. They're having a battle inside themselves to be able to just finally... Put it all to rest, plant the new seeds, grow new things, yeah. brand new. That's what you want. You no, know, we want truth. I want truth. Mm-hmm. I never ever you know, I, I've lived with lies my entire well, up until I was forty nine year old. That was a long time under yeah. this horrible umbrella, deceit and 
eyes and pulls it and things. It really does stink and it, it ingrains you and it takes an awful lot to get it out. But when you can go in and just start turning the soil again yeah. and other people and just take them back to what? To the fucking basic yeah. roots. Yeah. To what we're supposed to be here for. To I, grow as individuals. I think at this stage as well, there have always been trolls. There have always been nutters. There have always been, like I said earlier, we can do it better, yeah, on you go. <laughs> See you the other end. <laughs> Gee, 20 years um, <laughs> but I would be lying to say it doesn't affect me. It mm-hmm. has got it has its effect for a moment. And then the two things the two things that I always go back to measure the size of your critic. Is there anything about that person that you'd like to be that you'd aspire <laughs> to, that you'd like to be anything like? No. So why does their opinion matter? Why yeah. do you give a about it? Yep. But when it's when it's things that are and they're designed this way, they're poisoned arrows, designed to go right to the heart of your truth, your integrity. Um, and with me, they'll do things like my parenting. I yeah. was a crap parent because yeah, this. You uh, dedicated too much of your life. Not entirely sure how the two go together. But but there are some that, you know, for a moment, they're going to sting. And I see it happening to some of the others now. They're targeting them and they're going for them. How do you say to people that haven't had years and years and years of this, just ignore it? Yeah. Because you didn't actually ignore it. You take it, you bundle it up, and you you get rid. Yeah. But for people that is coming to brand new, it's that it's that personal, personal, like she's a this or you know, nah. and and they're, they're absolutely devastated. And I, I totally understand that. When yeah, it first yeah. started happening to me, I could not believe it. A couple of the ones that you told us <coughs> before, I, it's not so much that I couldn't believe it. I would never have lived with it. Mm. Fucking me. But I'm a different breed of animal altogether. When I know that something's unjust, it's unjust, and you're not going to change my mind on yeah. it. I, I don't yeah. care who you are. If there's a failing, there's a failing. To deny it, that's a failing in yeah. itself. So for you to attack me because you believe in a lie, I'm sorry, yeah. you're never going to no chance. But that, I suppose that's what I was coming to is, is, is if if I can see an end in sight, other people can see an end in sight. Definitely. So yeah. these guys are coming out in force because it's getting to the end. You know, yeah. it's like throw everything at them now, make them trip up uh-huh. at, at the the finish line, all of that, and you're just like, yeah, okay. Well, well, mind we had we had a few negative comments, I would say, and every single one of them uh, entertained, and I asked them to come. But no one wants to. No, they never oh, do. Right, right, you're flinging bullets at us. Right, I've caught a couple. Right, come and sit with me and educate me for the other side. Mm-hmm. Nobody. No. Nothing. Tumbleweeds. They disappear. Yeah. You know, they give their two bobs but and they disappear. And it's like, and then it's all these fake names. Nobody wants to be, you, you know it's a troll when they've got a user, five, six, seven, whatever. And yeah. Even some of them have names, but they just still troll. And, and, and it's like no one backs up the opposition. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the other thing that gets me. I can't understand why there's no... If there's all these people that want to chuck bombs and poison darts at you and they chuck things at him just because of the way he looks and they'll probably have a pop at me at some point because of my beard, eh, whatever. <laughs> Where are they? Why do they not sit around the table and say, well, that's... Because un- you, know, you know yourself that yeah. when truth's in the room, you're not going to hide for Aye. it. You can't hide for you it, can. especially when it's a lie that you're bringing to the table. It'll just get pushed off the edge because it's, it's a lie. But I think, uh. I think, for because people are going to take on take all over after me. You know, yeah. a, a lot of the you met some of them mm-hmm. on Saturday. This is now their life's mission. Yeah. Not this case, but this work. Yeah. And to say to them, to have the faith to stand in truth, yeah. Yeah, no awesome. matter what they throw at you, yeah. don't fight back. Don't give them any of your energy. Trust that that truth. Yeah. You just stand there in that truth, and that'll... You join a, yeah. a list of very, very uh-huh. prominent figures in history to be able to stand there and take <laughs> the crap that comes towards you. Yeah, you, I would rather join that elite mob yeah. for standing up for something. I think it was a public enemy. If uh-huh. you didn't stand for something, you'll fall just for like everything. fall for that <laughs> fucking shite. <laughs> yep. Definitely. So, 
Aye, and by the way, when we Danny gets the bit between us teeth, good luck getting rid of that wee lassie. Ever, the way she was on Saturday, this should now. Eh? She that? is. You want that wee lassie in your corner, but let me oh, assure you. Th- that, wee, that wee lassie has been in the corner for day one, and uh, I'm telling you, she's going places. Aye, definitely. She, she, when I say there's people going to take over uh-huh. for me, next generation, yeah, she'll be at the forefront. She'll be your next gen. <laughs> she will be at the forefront. It must be nice to be at that, you know, seeing that light, to be able to hand the baton over, knowing that this truth is never going away. I never mm-hmm. want it to go away. I didn't ever want it to, to be defended. I just want everybody to live with the truth is the truth. It doesn't matter. Then you gloss it over. Yeah. All these, you know, even the, the lawyers and the QCs that know that they're, you know, they're just slipping that foot here, an extra stab. And, no, no. I want to see you sleeping at night with both the fucking eyes open because something's going to come for yeah. you at some point. And it may be on your deathbed. It might be in the next life. But I can't believe that they never give that a second thought when they're like, should I? Fuck it, look at the money involved. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Now look at the time you're going to carry that weight with you. Because again, I had a conversation with a young lass earlier on. When when there is wrongs being wronged, but you're living in the truth, and you you walk that street, that person's seed goes that way when you walk past, your heed goes that way. I want to see them. I want to see their heads going down because... <laughs> the, I mentioned once before that there's a, a guy who comes on and trolls when I'm live sometimes. Mm-hmm. Now, see, just behind you there, right. straight through that wall. Oh, right. Aye. That's where he trolls me from. <laughs> it's a neighbour. I kid you not. Oh, no right way. Right through that wall. Wow. He'll give it everything online. I'll walk out that door that you came in, and if he's in his garden, we'll there you go. Fantastic. Won't even look yeah. in my direction. So, days. Tam the Bam, hi. <laughs> Say hi next time. Hi, Tam. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sandra. Yeah. It's, we've poked a hole at the system. We've poked a hole at various different things there and ourselves. Next, look, the last time we spoke, he was in Greenock, and I think it might have only been a couple of weeks after we got that podcast out that a lot changed. I think you released some uh, communication that Luke had, the telephone uh, communication that Luke was, is allowed to have, did have, but then he, and he, he, there was a load of repercussions about that, that you've already put out there. It's been in numerous podcasts since then. So where is the laddie at now? Uh, not only locality, but physically, mentally, with that sort of setback that he's had just through doing something that he was allowed to do? I think a lot of people didn't understand that he always knew that that could be the outcome. Mm-hmm. We, we talked at length about it. You know, if this goes out and they lose their minds, they could ship you back right. to close conditions. And he was like, so be it. And that, that podcast, that weekend, that crazy weekend, when he was shipped back in the dead of night and even his lawyer didn't know where he was and nobody could get a hold of him. And then I got the phone call saying, you better shift. There's a chance they're going to come after you as well. I was like, for God's sake. Uh, Obviously, that was that was to make sure he and I couldn't communicate. Right. So, yes, it had always been there that they could that would be the consequence, but we hadn't allowed for it in those circumstances. Didn't right. think they would go that far as to, like, just go incommunicado. Right. Disappear him, literally disappear him out of the system. And then, no phone calls with his lawyer. Yeah. Like, that completely illegal. So... Yeah. I mean, I did listen to them. And when I was listening, I was like, oh, you're poking the bear, you're poking with two fingers now. And, Quite rightly so, I think the boy deserves to. He should be oh, yeah. kicking and punching, not just poking. But you could hear it, you could hear it. Nah, that's another, they're, nah, they're not going to like this. They're not going to like yeah, that. We, and it was almost, I was almost willing on myself personally, look, stop, just stop. I know. You know, but it, it had to get out. Yeah, Aye. every single one of those conversations, because that wasn't just yeah. one conversation. No, no, no. So I'd record one. Was that three or something? Well, there's, there's four episodes. Right, okay. But there were probably about, seven or eight conversations mm-hmm. that made those episodes. Right. And after each one, I'd go back to him the next time and say, right, here's what we've got. You know, anything you want taken out? And he's like, no, no, I want that out, I want that out. The first phone call he got out, the first message he got out, it wasn't uh-huh. a phone call, after all that disappearing him, was to one of the supporters, tell Sandra she has full autonomy, 
tell everybody everything. Mm-hmm. So he was completely unrepentant. Well, there's nothing <laughs> more they can do to him anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? He said that countless times himself. Oh, look, this isn't about me anymore. Yeah. I am where I am. When, he was, in, when he was in shots before, mm-hmm. um, it, they were really good to him because he'd been there for a very long time. Most of them knew, and I'm talking guards and governors and everything, knew he was innocent. Oh. So he was left alone. Since they shipped him back, it's almost like they've parachuted in new significant people right. to make his life hell. And all the all the he didn't enjoy privileges as such. He was he was a lifer. Right. But he didn't get the the really downside of being a life because he behaved and you know, he did what he was told and everything. Mm-hmm. That's gone. And things like Look, I haven't asked you this, but I know you're all right, mate. Um, he's money for his phone. Yeah. So what he used to do is, he, if you get a form, you fill up your phone for your canteen uh. money. So that's just the, for anybody that doesn't know, just their money that they've got to spend for the week. But the, there's another form, and the, it's specifically for money to top up the phone. So when there's stuff going on, there's big things going on, you know, loads of calls need, he just fills that form in and gets extra money on his phone. The governor has now decided that he only gets to top up the extra amount equal to what he had on his canteen. So he went with that for a bit, which was a nightmare because he, oh. he's actually having to time his calls now, right? I need to go, I've been on for 18 minutes. Oh. So then he thought, right, I'll do with that other stuff and I'll up the money for my canteen. So that means he, he does, he, he gets less treats, toiletries, things that he can buy with yeah. his own money um, to put that extra money on his phone. And then the governor said, well, no, you're not getting more for your canteen because you've doubled what, uh, for, for the extra, because you've doubled what you put on for your canteen. Why do you need any more? Like, like total gaslighting, total yeah. mind Mind play. games, eh? Um, so that's the sort of thing they're doing with me now. He's property, um, people sending them things in. It just used to be they sent them stuff in and he got the message and he got his stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's, oh, uh, you can have that bit and that bit and we'll think about the rest. That, that'll that go into storage. That, you know, you'll get that, you get that when you're released. Um, the, the, the information we're having to get creative, I hope you're listening we're having to get creative about how we send them information oh, because they're now looking at like a you know, a large letter Yeah, yeah. if it's too thick, that could be a book <laughs> it's not a letter because it's too big to be a letter it could be right. a book uh, so, so, well okay mm. if you didn't want us to send them a book, we'll send them chapters you can you open them? If he was taking hostages or going up on the roof or something like that, then maybe you can see it. But yeah. it doesn't seem to be doing much. You know I mean? No, because because he always believed on the campaign on the in the campaign on the outside. Mm-hmm. So if he kept his nose clean in there and we kept the campaign going out here, the two would meet at the end yeah, seamlessly. Yeah. Was was the way he saw it, um, and right up until they moved him to Greenock, that was the case. Mm-hmm. Which which makes you. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt when they moved him to Greenock, they wanted to break him. Right. This is a lad who for 18 years had not put a foot wrong in the system. And they threw everything at him to try and break him. Everything. So even the temptation of, right, you're on the road to release, to break him. Is that is that yeah. what you mean? Even that, like, well, here's look, almost the bone hang again. Eh? Yeah. Well, let's have a look at what you could have won. Yeah. <laughs> And the, and yeah. and to have let him have the three visits, the three um, outside mm-hmm. when he went to the, the shopping malls, and for everybody get, that gets the knickers in their demise, is that convicted uh, murderer? Yeah, that's what happens in progress with every prison. Well, yeah, that's, rehabilitation that's, is, is it not? Uh, mm. You're training for freedom because it, your sentence is about to finish yeah. and they can't keep you there, oh. so your reintroduction to society should really be... There's an interesting term, training. Mm-hmm. All right. so I've been weaked away. He's been told more times than I can count there is no training, there's only testing. We we got a wee guy and this wee guy has been recalled 
he'd done way over, way, way beyond the numbers that was given to him. And uh, there was no training. They just opened the door and says, boom. Yeah. I think he was 24. 24 years. Yeah. Never seen anything beyond it. And then bang, just out the door. And like, whoa. Yeah. Do you expect him to just toe the line? Or is this another social experiment where you're all sitting watching the guinea pig when the wheels come off and then somebody goes that right, pay your money, pay your money. I told you wouldn't last that long. You think, no, this you have to reintroduce me. Everything's changed in 24 years. This has been going on for <sighs> years. This just chucking them out with nothing. Chucking is mental. Mm-hmm. Absolutely crazy. But this idea that there's no training, there's only testing. I was like, like wait a minute, they're testing you <laughs> for something that you have not done in 20 years. Yeah. Uh. Very like, bizarre. How do they hey. test that? Just by chucking you right in the deep end. Precisely. Can you actually yeah. swim? Oh, he's drowned. Oh, bugger. Oh, Oops. shit. Can he uh-huh. swim then? We should uh-huh. have, maybe sh- somebody should have jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were waiting to see if... I, I'm uh-huh. pretty sure he was going to swim. Uh-huh. Um, well, so, yeah, <laughs> that, that, the dangling, the letting him have the three, the three outings yeah. and then whipping it away from... That's the old bullseye, isn't it? Th- this that uh, was on the way. You didn't want to give you that. Yeah, that that was the way that that led eventually to the the Sound of Silence series. Yeah, because it was torture upon torture upon. And I I I use that word deliberately. It was torture. Mm. They, they tortured him. He, he couldn't go and see his mum. They wouldn't let him go and see his mum. And they told him if he did go and see his mum, it would be like double cuffed. And in the, the security van. Uh, and oh, aye, we'll make a spectacle of this because the cameras are probably... Yeah. Awesome, so. and but the he, thing but he could go on his own to, let's say... A, five guys. Aye, <laughs> right, okay, he could go to a five guys, sit down, have a burger, a coffee, on his own. Yeah. But he couldn't sit with his mother. In a house. Uh, aye, nuts. But one of the things I said to him was like, oh, you know, we don't know how the neighbours would react. I can tell you... How what, would they know? I can tell you what the neighbours said. Uh. If you put out there... Welcoming him, welcome uh, him, him in. Aye. So all they had to do was ask. Mm. All they had to do was ask the neighbours. what they would normally do. But you, you notice that when they actually, you know, they protect those other individuals of society, they really would any fucking want. They don't chap your door and say, oh, by the way, we're going to exactly. put so-and-so next door to you across the road for the school because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do they fly in? Fuckery, fuckery. The council knows because they allocate yep. the house and the police know because they've got to register that address. They know exactly what they're putting next door to you and you have no mm-hmm. question asked. So to be asked, why would they? Do you know what I mean? Interestingly, just, I always believed that was the way it happened, that the council knows and then the police know and it's all got to be registered and everything. Um, not necessarily. Sometimes the police and the system mm-hmm. put them somewhere and the council doesn't even know they're there. How did he manage to get them in Initially. that council uh, allocated? Because they they have they have a number of so addresses. So they already got them. Ah, right, I <clears> see. Okay. So so the council's got no idea which one. Ah, Initially, right, uh, they've got no idea which one they put them in. I know that gets sorted out later on, mm. but in that early stage, the council get it in the neck, and they don't know either. But they didn't know. <laughs> well, again, that's where whistleblowers should be shouting. So listen, man, they because yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I think that they know because I see the wee women, they want to get wee banners and saying, get these people out. Yeah. But then he want them round about our kids. Why are you putting them here? And the police, will, they'll show their presence, they'll remain backwards. They know exactly where they are. Yeah. And they know exactly what they've got to do because what happens is you get somebody like me who could be perceived as a survivor or a victim. doesn't matter what shoe I'm wearing. But if that individual who's been you know, targeted should say the wrong thing and I react as a male mm-hmm. and I react... He then becomes a victim and I become the perpetrator. And you're like, how in the name of fuck is that? Well, that's why I've yeah. done that fine line. Mm-hmm. Just, it's horrible. Yeah. Really horrible. So where's he at? Well, I don't mean physical. Where's he at? <laughs> as in... He's in prison. I mean, James. what, 20 years this year? Uh, 20, 20, 20 next year? April. April, April next year. is 20 it's years. 20, yeah. So that sentence served... The twenty-year sentence. Well, it's the minimum sentence. Served. The minimum sentence, yeah. right? Okay. Was there a maximum put on? No. Or was it minimum without, without limit of time? You will. All right. So you will be held without limit. So of you time. never yeah. got a tariff then. Yeah. He, he got a, a twenty-year minimum. Twenty-year minimum. Year minimum. That that minimum stretches as yeah, far as Yeah, his maximum want. is without limit of time, um, right. which apparently was very unusual for a sixteen-year-old back then. 
Uh, anyway. Well, uh, there's not much uh, being fucking usual about this. Though, no, so, that's uh, true. At the minute, he's, he's very, very focused. He's very positive. He knows everything that's going on. I, I keep saying this. Aye. You know, Aye. there's there's nothing gets Can he see a light? Can you see a light down there? Aye. He doesn't or did he just keep generally snapping? allow himself to go there. Um th- there's that sense of I will be here till I'm somewhere else. That's it. And I know people didn't understand that, Aye. but people have not lived his circumstances. I get it. <sighs> I get it. You, you could not be getting yourself built up every time yeah. to come crash it in those that's, circumstances. Because even when he gets out, there'll be a license, won't there? So even at that point, unless, 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 it, unless it's a, a, a reversal, uh-huh. which you're if, saying, if we get the conviction overturned, right? When we get the conviction overturned, yeah, uh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. There yeah. will be yeah. no license. Right. However, when we get the conviction overturned, they still have the option to put him under MAPA. Right. Which is the multi-agency public protection agency. Right. So he's not on license, but he's he under is. all the same conditions eyeball, as being no. on uh, under under license. But it, when we when we get the conviction overturned, um, I have to be a wee bit careful. There are a couple of circumstances uh-huh. in which the overturning of the conviction would not allow them to put him under MAPA. It's a, it's a whole technical argument, and I'm, I'm not going to go down that route. No. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff we have to keep our powder dry. And all these nutters out there shouting, ah, we need this, we need you don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Sit down. Aye. We're, we're at a really critical stage here. Don't go buggering things up by doing yeah. something stupid. Um, sorry, that wasn't a direct... No, no, no. Thing, no. But it's it's just, you know... But, but he's... Stupid. <laughs> it comes with a stone blue. <laughs> he's he's aware of all of this, so he knows Good. he knows all the technical arguments. He knows all the because um, obviously we do not want him out on a technicality. Mm-hmm. And danger. one mm-hmm. of the things that's been floated is the samples. You know how there was only the the forensic samples left; everything else has been um, destroyed. Lost. And one of the theories that's been floating about there is, oh, they'll destroy the remaining samples, mm-hmm. and then they'll have to overturn the conviction. Because but on a technicality, they'll never have to uh, argue the points mm. at appeal because it there's still nothing to do him. He exactly, needs to yeah. be totally. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, so that's one of the one of the arguments that's that's floating about out there at the minute. It's one of the things that some people seem to think is the most likely. Route forward. Mm-hmm. I think differently. Mm-hmm. I have reason to think differently. <laughs> and Luke knows what those reasons are. Mm. It, it's really difficult because obviously I have to take decisions on his behalf. Right. Now, mostly I won't take a decision until I've spoken to him. So if it's one that I can say, right, give me to the end of the week, I'll speak to Luke in between and say, this is what's happened. This is what I'm suggesting we do. What do you think? And right. he'll, he'll either say, yeah, or no, do it that way or do it that way. But there are times, there have been times, even recently, where it's been a drop of the hat and I've had to make that decision yeah. on his behalf. That is stressful. Oh, that well, is. Right. And, and trying to explain to people, in those moments, I have his literal future in my hands. Yeah. You want that responsibility. You think you could handle that responsibility? Go ahead and try it. Mm. But those moments, and he always says, "Look, I trust you implicitly. If you make a decision and it's the wrong decision, I'd probably have made the same decision anyway." Yeah. So, so you've, yeah, you, you to have just that, me. yeah. But it's still uh, their moments. They are moments where you take the decision, and then it might be two days before I can speak to him. So I've got two days to be walking around the house. Should have done that. Could have done it differently, you know. It's, it, it's that tax into the mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just find it fascinating that you no, know, this far down the line, to still be putting that much effort into something. But still, it, it's it's that mental side. Yeah, I know people that would have lost the plot a long time ago, even in your shoes. Yeah, I th- I think there's a couple of things you you always have to be able to have that bit where you can stand behind it. 
which exactly. you're it's not that easy to do let's be honest about it mm. but if you didn't have that you would lose your mind but the other thing is and i i accepted this probably around about 2008 2009 when i really started to understand how it works you have to be three steps ahead mm. so you look at something and you go if we do this they'll do that and then we'll have to do that back to the beginning right we'll do that instead then they will do that and we oh no, that's not going to work and that for every single thing you do you've literally got to lay it all out like that and then find I suppose the path of least resistance I think that's where I, I, I have found that there is a running theme with people that have broken brains it's what they do they yeah. psychoanalyse everything so they, they end up getting stuck inside that yeah. room and it's like the minority report where you take that you take that you put that there doesn't work put that back doing that and okay that was you have to do it yeah. and you to me, there's genius in that. It's that fine line again between exactly. genius and fucking insanity. Exactly. you can lose your mind. And that's uh, my heart comes off to you because I don't know if I could, you know, I would have lost my mind by now. And that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be able to just stand up and say, this is wrong. I would be making noise and it would be detrimental to me. I'd end up in behind them. Now, beside them, it'd be like, <laughs> arsehole. Now, we're both up <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's but, I, I thought we could have set with a T-shirt, but I don't think he would appreciate the T-shirt with shit creek with on shit it. creek on it. Oh, I think well, he's I, had his hand in the jobbies for a long time. I was going to bring up the day to get you, Sandra, to send them, but <laughs> then I was going to give the, the cup, we hope. Aye, we hope, aye. Yeah. I, um, I, is it the, ceramic? Ah, yeah, aye. for you, though. I, I, I don't aye, think, think you would yeah, get it. He wouldn't be allowed to, no. no. What about T-shirts? Um, There's an issue with T-shirts at the minute. Right. I think they can... I'd, I'll have to check what the current situation so, yeah, <laughs> even down to things like that <laughs> it changes on the drop of hat like, now I'm going to have to think what we're going to do here about that witness that's just come forward with the new evidence about that and by the way what about the t-shirts <laughs> too much <laughs> uh, you just stick with you, just stick with that fine line uh, that you're just on and just crack on with that. On that the cup was for you it's right. just, they're all my doodles uh, we've been um, Oh, there's, there's things can happen with them as well, but they're all trauma, and that's the, the new word that we're using is trauma informed art. It's the way that I project things, yeah. and there's a story in it. And again, you'll see it, and you would see the hieroglyphic yeah. aspect to it rather than writing silly lines and you looking between the lines, look at the picture, it'll talk to you. It's probably better than I can use and articulate words. And James put two of them on a cup. One's it's half a boat, but it's it's the colours. You can't see the boat, and it's like it's like the survivors of life. You can't see them unless you put a fine light on them, mm -hmm. because they're no victims, because they never tell the story. They just go on regardless. They're yeah. very to me. They're the diamonds. They're the real salt of the earth. They're the people that we want. But right now, that light that is shining on them, it, it's gay as it sounds. Or I shouldn't use that word, but it's love, and that's yeah. what we've been missing. It becomes such a flippant throw. The, the no, it's just, oh, I love you, man, because you broke my sausage roll and my costa to me. No, you didn't. No. It used to be a real emotion. And yeah. for me, it was a big emotion. It was something that you were like, oh, I'm going to tell her I love her. Yeah. And the next minute, yeah. she stabs you in the heart, kicks you in the back, takes her wallet. You, know, you bastard, that couldn't have been love then because you wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Now, I think it's an overpouring a feeling and understanding for other people. It doesn't have to be a sexual partner. It's just no. something that's there. And that's all, oh, there's a theme, there must be what, 80, 90? Oh, 90, I think. Individual doodles, but the two that he got in the cup was, one was the original wee man, he's behind the boys, waving the wee white flag, and it's just titled Shit Creek. And it's a pond with all the rubbish in there, yeah, motorbikes, yeah. cars, drink, drugs, everything's in there. And on the blue cup, it looks fantastic. Another one is the colour falling onto the front of this wee boat, and it just says we're all in the same boat. Yeah. And the boat is called Hope. Mm -hmm. And that just, I thought that would do you perfectly. Yeah, but stupid I like little that. Ass, I forgot to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have that. That was one. the wrong yeah. end to that story. Oh, that was <laughs> it. And then you just went up, oh, boom. Oh, okay. Bring me up, then. Take me away. Cut me off. So, look, we're about an hour and a half in. So, I did have loads of questions, but I'm going to, f no finish on one. But I want to ask you something f that I've not seen be asked. What does Luke actually do? What does he do? inside what's he good at what does he like what does he get up to what is he allowed what you know what's he allowed and what is he passionate about his loads of questions there. yeah one one of his absolute absolute favorite things is 
the gardens and the polytunnels. Right. He's out. So he's you could have a plot. Out, well. <laughs> Coming to a polytunnel near you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, he really, really enjoys the gardening, the cultivating the soil. Yeah, just mm. all of that. It was him that told me you can grow peanuts in the UK. I did not know really? that. So I didn't know you could grow pineapple. Ah, well, you see, <laughs> see, when I found that out, what, it, one of his friends was going, and I said, "Tell mm. Luke, I'll see his peanuts and up on pineapples." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, th- that's that's gardening and growing stuff. And, yeah, yeah that, he, he loves to be outside. He loves to be in nature, but he always did. Aye. Before is he an art man? In. Does he doodle? Um, not at the moment. He does. Uh-huh. He does the calligraphy. Um, I think see he's, see his doodles. I think he he would find that cathartic side that I do. He's getting into art now. Mm-hmm. Um, Good. but they're bugging him about that. with his art supplies. Uh, right. You know, uh. everything he everything that's an expression of him, they're just like slamming it down. Um, education wise, yeah, you know, everything he tried. Just became like like he wanted to do um, open university, Aye. and they wouldn't allow him to use the computers. So it was like discs and print offs. How would you in like, this so there's day no and internet age, access there? Eh? Oh no, so he, 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 he wouldn't get no, it. No, no. that bizarre in itself. Is something, you know, that like people it. people send him emails, Aye. and I, I get I sent I sent him an email. He's no email back yet. I was like, yeah, because it goes into an office, gets printed off, it gets uh. all gathered up. Three days later, he's got a handwrite a response. They take it back, scan it, and that's what you get back. Yeah. Didn't be bothering me with your. I emailed them yesterday, and it hasn't got back to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he he loves his garden. He's getting into his art now. Um, he used to read, but he's kind of, I guess, over time, with that amount of. Kicking down. That's what I'm saying. See, for uh, for that, he would get because he'll have accumulated so yeah. much fucking, and ninety nine percent is probably fucking rubbish. Yeah. But to get that out and just find yeah. that clarity, just give him space in his own head. And his uh, his other thing is his computer games, um, again, like not online ones. Yeah. And and he said himself, if I need to shut the mind down, it's mindless. Just turn it on uh. and. I do that with these Hollywood blockbusters. Uh, yeah. My wife thinks, oh, it's a lot of shite, it's all bangs and da-da-da. you like, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just turns everything off and just, wow, just be entertained yeah. for that hour or two. And yeah. You're back in the room. So that that's, the, these are the things that, certainly before all of this, that he enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in Greenock, he was starting to find new expression because he had more freedoms. Right. Um but that was very short lived. So he, he's back to. I know we'll be well doing the pecking order, but I can't wait to speak to him. Mm. Yeah. Because I'd love to speak to him. I'd love to hear him. You know, because so much about him that I've listened to. Yeah. I'd love to actually be sitting opposite him. Well, I'm sitting opposite his pictures, but just in hearing that, I yeah. think there's hours and hours and hours and weeks and days How in there. He aged as the, the, the that guy yeah. to where he is now. You Can you see it in him? Yeah. You would not know him. You'd yeah, pass him yeah. in the street. Yeah. You'd pass him in the street and not know it was him. That mm-hmm. in itself isn't he fair, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In terms of when he gets out, and we've had this, this discussion as well, <clears throat> in terms of media <sighs> and interviews and all of that, ideally, he'll do the Aye. expected interview when the conviction's overturned. Yeah. And then hopefully... We're going to be able to spirit them away out of the public eye mm-hmm. for a reasonable period of time before he starts getting interviewed. Yeah. Because, let's face it, the press shit on him for a great height back then. And mentally, I know I've seen the guys that have come out, I've seen the pressure on them, I've seen the, uh, the adjustment. Yeah, yeah. That's not a time for them to be being sitting in front of... Yeah. No chance. People firing questions oh, no, at him. Christ I no. know you guys wouldn't do it, but, you know, like for anybody <sighs> else that's thinking as soon I'd, as he comes I'd out. I'd be sat with drool. No, I'd no probably chance. be sat there going, I can't believe half the things I'm hearing from him probably yeah. wouldn't ask a question. They wouldn't need to. Yeah. For you me, know? it'll just be, I can't believe I'm sitting across the table from him. 
Yeah. And there's no guards without, in this room. Without that, uh, yeah. Earthquakes, yeah. 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 Well, if he gets to hear this, I wish him well anyway. I wish. I don't think uh, sitting down with him, I don't think you would have any questions for nah. him. You would just, like, again, I, well, I know that the other people would think I was stoned out my nut. Because uh, I would just be absolutely mesmerised. Yeah. I'd be the same, I think. Yeah. Uh, he'd be like the puppy dogs, eh? the heads would be going to church all the time. Spoke to him yeah. on Friday night, uh. um, because I was supposed to go out and visit on Friday, and then I had my, my plumbing disaster, and I couldn't uh. go. So he called him Friday night. Doesn't he bad pools? There's, or, <laughs> yeah, didn't he, as the case may be. Um, there's how thoughtful he is. Yeah. He called to see if I was all right, because we'd, there'd been loads went on last week, and, and then I had the... The protest the following day and the plumbing had gone. Uh, um, but he phoned him Friday night and we laughed like uh, lunatics. It was one of those you're <laughs> one of those conversations where one thing triggered another, triggered another, and we were just absolutely cracking up laughing. And I came off the phone. And I thought, Do you know what? To have maintained that sense of humour through everything, uh, where you can still actually have that conversation and you can still. Like the nonsense humour. He said, so what are you going to be doing with the rest of your Friday evening? I said, I'm going to be planting my pineapple top. Yeah. He was like, well, that's not something you hear every Friday evening. <laughs> yeah, just that nonsense. Uh, but the fact that he's able to do that, even now, even after everything. Hmm. Uh, that isn't half, eh? There's me getting that stoned look again about aye, myself. Aye, <laughs> you're just, aye. Are you on drugs? <laughs> Do you know any good dentists or hairdressers or makeup <laughs> artists? Plastic, Apparently, yeah, I need to look to them. I, I could maybe do a bit uh, oh. cosmetics myself. No, okay. Well, I've not been picked on yet. <laughs> I'm going to check into rehab. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> go I'm keeping myself off. off the camera now. And by the way, the pineapple it isn't it real, it's actually a metaphor oh. for something else that I've been smoking during ad breaks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sandra, is let's finish up. Is there anything you want to finish up on? Anything you need for whoever will see this? Uh, help? Anything? Anything that they can keep doing to support you and the team? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep turning out. Keep sharing the word. Keep getting the message out there to anybody that will listen. And then he gets sidetracked by the nonsense. Yeah, we all know where we're going. Eyes on the prize. Yeah. There's only there's only one goal here. Well, it's a dual goal. Get Luke home. Justice for Jody. Right. So Denny, Denny. Same thing, isn't it? Really. Denny get yeah. caught up in all the shenanigans. Keep doing what you're doing because you're brilliant. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks for your time. I'm not going to play out with the jingle because it's too serious a topic. Al, you can do your bit. I um, will uh, just say. There you go. Thank you very much for listening to us again and giving us time inside your wee sanctum. And I wish you the very best with the gardening because I know the garden will be the end of this. Thank you. And uh, I'll just finish with saying I hope, and it's part of his doodles, um, is there's one called Freedom. And I hope both you and Luke are able to unshackle that bag of shite and throw it. All right? Adios, amigo. Love it. <laughs>